your condition. Yes. He knows your fears. Yes. He knows your apprehensions. He knows that you're tired and that it's getting late and the situation's getting worse. Yes. Yes. But hold on. Help is on the way. Yes. Am I right right there? Yes. Mark writes, but at the fourth watch yes. of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. And he would, as your honor, have passed them by. Uh -huh. Let me unpack a little of that. Is that all right? Yeah. Notice this. <laughs> First of all, when Jesus came to the disciples, he came when they least expected him right. to come. Mm -hmm. I need to help somebody here who's about ready to give up on God. Yeah. He always comes when you least expect it. Yeah. Am I right right there? Y'all yeah. know I'm right, right? Yeah. You've been holding out, Nikki, and holding out and holding out. See, y'all, that's it. I'm about to quit. And that's when he comes through. Yeah. Am I right right there? Yeah. But when he came, he didn't come to rescue them from the wind. The Bible says that he would have passed them by. In other words, he came to show himself, not to stop the storm. I need to help you through here. Because some of us only want to save it from the problem. And when he fixed the problem, you go and he can't find it. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Christianity of convenience. God, I'm broken. I need my money because it's funny. If you bless me, I promise I'll give it back to you. Give it back to you, you off to the bingo palace. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to double your trouble. Am I right? God, if you give me a woman, I promise I swear we'll serve you. Yeah. Yeah. You got the girl and you ain't been to church since. Yeah. <laughs> God, if you give me a job, I'll do all that you want me to do. I'll be a witness for you. Get you a job, you get promoted, and you don't come to church. No. Yeah. Christianity will come in. Right. God deliberately sometimes shows up in the storm, not to stop the storm, just to refocus you in the storm. Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. He comes to them not to get in the boat, but he would have passed them by. Right what are you talking about, Pastor? Well, well, Jesus in this text, Mark reveals to us God's motive for the appearance. All right. See, they forgot who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get to this at the end of the sermon, but at the miracle of the five loaves, they didn't get it. He revealed to them who he was by his provisions in a miraculous way, but they missed it. So he sent them out in the storm that they could toil for a little while. So they could get refocused to find out who they had in their midst. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Isn't that something right there? Listen, they had Jesus all the time and failed to recognize him. So he used the crisis to reintroduce himself. Can I ask a million dollar question? Has God ever introduced the crisis so that you could get reacquainted with him? Has he ever brought a little weed in your way? Come on, talk to me now. It's all right if you say it, man. They know I'm talking about you anyway. <laughs> Have you ever used a little wind just to get you to get refocused? Uh, yeah. Find out what your priorities were. Yeah. I believe that's what he's done to America. Yeah. I'm just going to chase this rabbit for a minute. Yeah. For a country who said we've been founded on oh God. Are you with me here? Yeah. And we've been pursuing the Judeo-Christian values. And we've let idols pop up in our schools. Yeah. We've let homosexuality in our gender moved through the country and the church was silent. God said, I'll yeah. on your money. Yeah. Just so you can get refocused. Are you with me here? Interesting point. Mark specifically says, it was at the fourth watch of the night. Why does he say this? Well, the Romans used a different time system Sort of than what we had. They divided the clock up, the 24-hour day, into four watches. The fourth watch was always the darkest hour before day. This was that 3 o'clock in the morning hour. 
Are you with me here? Right. He said it was the fourth watch that Jesus came walking on the sea. Right. Let me back the car up and put it in reverse for a minute. Oh, he sent them out at sunset, which was probably 7, 6, 7 o'clock in the evening. But now it's 3 a.m. in the morning. They've been rowing for a long time. Y'all don't hear me here. That's about eight or nine hours of toiling. Are you with me through here? Struggling, just trying to get across a six-mile sea. And every time they try to get somewhere, the wind just set them back. I think you know where I'm going here. Some of you have been rowing a long time. You say, Pastor, it's been 15 years. I've been lonely like this. It's been seven years I've been without employment. It's been ten years I've been struggling with this. It's been five years that I'm dealing with that I can't get ahead. Maybe you forgot who Jesus was. And the storms and the winds that he brings your way are brought to you as a teacher. I like this text, though, because it's good news. When Jesus comes to the visit, it's the darkest hour before the day. Right. It's the light, yes, just before dawn. He saw him straining hours ago, but he didn't elect to arrive. This gets me right here. Regardless to how tired, frustrated, frightened, scared, and weary they were, he chose not to show up. Do you hear the sovereignty of God in this? Yes, sir, yes, sir. He chose deliberately not to come. He chose not to walk on the street. Now, I wrote myself a note. He didn't have to walk, you know. He could have flew. Right. <laughs> he could have swam. Yes. The word is now teleported. Yes. <laughs> but he chose walking. Now, why would Mark use this in the Greek language? Because, well, walking denotes he wasn't in a hurry. He was going to take his time. He knew when he would come. He knew he would rescue them when he came. And he knew when it was best for him to re-reveal himself to them. Can I turn the lights on right there? Sometimes your crisis has got to last a little longer because if he shows up too quick... You might think you have something to do with it. Am I right right there? He's educated, Pastor. He's been to the university. He's can figure out our way and our problems here. Are you with me here? So God said, I'm going to give you a situation that you can't get out of if I don't show up. I'm going to fix it so that when I show up, you're going to have to give me the credit, the honor, and the glory. So you just keep toiling for a little while. Yeah, like this, the old man, Caesar Clark, said he promised them to go over to the other side, not under. It's an amazing miracle of God here. I wrote myself a note here, daughter, that they were toiling, but he was strolling. <laughs> They were in trouble, but help was on the way. They were worried, but he was in reach. They were alone, but yet he was there the whole time. They thought the worst, but God had other plans. We can learn from this verse, family, that God is in control. Be not dismayed. The winds of life are not running anything. Tell your neighbor, the winds ain't in control. Randy, we can learn from this text that God has a plan to save us in the crisis and his eye is always on you. You can trust the scripture. Somebody needs to know this morning that God is bigger than the struggles you're facing. Somebody, yeah, Deacon Crawford, needs to know that God is bigger than their breakup. He's bigger than their shake-up. He's bigger than a hostile takeover. He's bigger than the wind.